both groups of aircraft were approaching each other at Mach 1.2 supersonic speed. Wow, this is going to be good. What up, Jet Team? Welcome back to the channel. I've missed you. <laughs> but if you haven't been here before, my name's Ryan. I'm a former F 15E combat fighter pilot, F 16 Thunderbird pilot, and commercial pilot. Someone on Instagram asked me to break down an F 18 head to head with a MiG 21 in a real world dogfight during the Gulf War. I'm pretty sure this was Maverick's grandfather in this F-18. It's the first time an F-18 executed a multi-role mission where they are in a dogfight carrying 2,000 pound bombs. So at the end of this, if you stay to the very end, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on what I think was going through the pilot's minds as they're turning and burning with these huge bombs hanging off of their jets. But before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, Maverick's grandfather cracks a smile wherever he is in the world, or something like that. <laughs> Let's dive in. On the first daylight raid, a flight of four carrier-based FA-18Cs from the aircraft carrier Saratoga were approaching their target, an airfield codenamed H-3 in western Iraq. When one of the Saratoga's E-2C Hawkeye radar aircraft spotted two bandits 15 miles ahead, so the fact that these F-18s are working with the E-2 Hawkeye, I mean, that is just such a huge advantage because I guarantee these MiG-21s, they're launching with situational awareness that's old. They're launching with awareness from a ground-based radar that's like, oh, there's probably gonna be some targets in this area here and they'll like try to update them, but the distance isn't great. And if there's any terrain in between them and where they're flying, that ground-based radar is just not gonna be able to help them out. So right off the bat, these F-18s, Huge advantage. And you know what they say, never go into a fair fight. And that's what they're doing. So well played F-18s. Let's continue. They were loaded down with 2000 pound bombs, but unlike previous Navy aircraft, Hornets were designed to go from the ground attack role to the dogfight role with just a flick of the switch. So essentially they're doing the same multi-role mission that an F-16 would do, or maybe even an F-15E, which an F-15E is a little more air to ground heavy, but it definitely has the capabilities of air to air as well. But in the Viper in the F-16, and I'm assuming it's relatively similar in the F-18, you basically push a button for air to air and a button for air to ground, and it kind of sets up some of the modes and you can pre-select some of those modes before even stepping in the cockpit with some of the cartridges we carry. So extremely user friendly. Now. I know there's the debate, right? Should you be good at one thing, just do air to air? Or should you be a jack of all trades, master of none? In my opinion, it can go both ways. You can argue this both ways. So I love the fact that like the F-22, the F-15C, for the most part, those things are air to air, air support, air support, support, yeah, that's a word, air superiority fighters that are just out there crushing the air to air game. I love that. And again, even for simplicity of being in a fighter squadron, that would be nice. For myself and other F 15E, F 35, F 16 pilots, it's all about the multi role game. So you're trying to be really good at a lot of different things, which can be hard, but it's not impossible. I remember times in my career, I'm not saying, I stayed there the entire time during my career, but there were definitely times, especially as like a young captain or maybe even all the way through your time as a captain where you're just so good at all the different mission sets because you're flying all the time, you're spending a ton of time in the vaults, getting all that knowledge, and you're not too consumed with some of the bureaucracy and administrivia is what we would call it in the squadron. Sign this. Uh, uh, uh. Where's the police? We're not animals. Sign it. No. Not without a please. Idiot. So you get really good at a lot of different missions. And I love that because you're, you're what's called a force multiplier. And that's just, I don't know, fancy word. I probably read somewhere in some magazine that just means you can do a lot of different things and they don't need a ton of people because they've got people who can take the place of a ton of people. So really awesome to execute. And that's what they're doing. Here we go. Let's continue. So that's coming from the E2, Bandit Bandit 230, 30 miles. I mean, they're telling that F-18 the direction it is off of it and how far. I mean, just 
incredible. And I don't, this looks like it probably is B-roll footage of the F-18 flying around, but if you're going against a MiG-21, hey, I think it's a good idea to be low because a lot of those radars in those old Soviet era jets are meant for a blue sky background. So if you're low and it's looking down, it's probably not gonna see you. It's gonna get a lot of ground clutter. And if it's using a ground-based radar that's at a fixed position, let's say along a coast somewhere, and it's scanning out and up, it's not gonna pick up any fighters that are down low with some of the terrain masking its location. So whether this is B-roll or not doesn't really matter. I think it actually could be a pretty good tactic going against the MiG-21. Let's continue. New picture, Bandit 190, 20 Take so the E-2 is going to say new picture, just like an AWACS would in the Air Force, and that kind of wipes the slate clean. And they'll do that. Like, let's say if those MiG-21s were flying close formation position, one of them broke off. So it looked like one airplane, and then it turns into two, or it looks like four, and then it turns into eight. They'll create a new picture, and that's how you establish your tactics as a flight lead of how you're going to attack this thing. So it's game time. When you start hearing that calm, you're like, all right, baby, let's go. Give me the ball. I want the ball. That was my mindset when I was playing sports was give me the ball. I want to be the one to run this thing down the field. And when it comes to flying fighter jets, you want to be the one at the point of the spear taking on that picture is what it's called. That's what the bandits are presenting you. Let's continue. Spread, fighter wing. Get out of my way. Bandit 24014. So the E2 controller says hot. That bandit is hot. That means he is pointed at you. High aspect, hot aspect. It is pointed at you. You're about to get into a knife fight in a phone booth. Let's see what happens. Hot on the aircraft 23530 from Mitty. Would it fare as well as the Air Force Strike Eagles? that had downed three Mirage F1s and three MiG-29s on the first night of the war. Strike Eagles, baby, that's right. Strike Eagles representing, that's how we do it. Man at Manny, 185-25, southbound. Then, Lieutenant Commander Mark Fox got a lock on one of the two MiG-21s and two of the other four pilots did as well. Both groups of aircraft were approaching each other at Mach 1.2 supersonic speed. Everybody's locked onto him. There's like, sounds like there's like four to six F 18s, two MiG 21s. Everybody's locking them up. <laughs> They're like, this is mine. Like, this, these are my kills, dude. Stay away. 200 radar contact on my nose, Mach 28,000. All right, so you can see the HUD, the heads-up display pulled up right now, and it says 9M for the AIM-9 Mike. That's the heat-seeking missile. You can hear the seeker with that growling tone trying to lock on. So he's probably a little bit rangy right now. He's a little bit far out for that thing to lock on. But if these MiG-21s are an afterburner, like it's going to lock on pretty far out. So let's see what happens. 35. So he says standby for VID, visual identification. So there can be times during conflicts where you really want to make sure what you're shooting down so that there's no chance of some sort of friendly on friendly type engagement. So he's saying standby VID. A lot of situations that I trained for were, were all VID scenarios because you don't want to start World War III by shooting down the wrong country's aircraft or obviously, in my opinion, even worse is shooting down a friendly. So he's about to get the VID. Let's see how it goes. Fox's Hornet fired its Sidewinder heat-seeking missile first. Then a Sparrow radar-guided missile. There was a fireball. That's a MiG-21. That's a MiG-21. Yep, that's so he's putting two missiles into this aircraft. And here's the reason why I think he's doing that, guys, because you might want to save missiles for follow-on, but he's loaded down with 2,000 pound bombs. So the worst thing that can happen is one of those missiles miss, and then the MiG-21 sees him and starts turning with him. Now he's probably going to have to punch off his 2,000 pound bombs in order to get into a dogfight, which he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to maneuver, doesn't want to lose those weapons, because we would always say, like, if you make someone punch off their bombs, that's a mission success. Now you're making them have to go back to base, having to fight back into hostile territory, and you're delaying successful objectives of the attacking force. So the fact that he's shooting two, I like it. You gotta be careful so you don't go Winchester, which means you're out of bullets, you're out of missiles, you gotta make sure you're smart about it. But I would do the same 
if I was rocking those heavy air to ground munitions. Then his wingman fired a second missile, and there was a second fireball. Throughout the engagement with the MiGs, the Navy aircraft kept their bombs. And following their two kills, Lieutenant Commander Fox and his wingman rejoined the other two Hornets and continued with their bombing attack. The whole battle had taken less than 40 seconds and is believed to have been the first time that it That was just kind of weird because it looked like the stick was in his left hand and the throttle was on his right. <laughs> So in the Hornet, the stick would be in your right hand, it's in between your legs, and the throttle would be on the left. So, oh, interesting. An aircraft has scored an air-to-air -air kill while carrying bombs. As the four F-18s peeled away from the Iraqi airfield and headed south, they could see two columns of black smoke rising up from the desert where the MiGs had crashed, hitting the ground in the same relative formation as when they were shot down. These two kills were the Navy's only confirmed air-to-air -air kills of Iraqi fixed-wing aircraft. If ever confirmation was needed, this was it. The Hornet could fight its way to a target, brush aside the opposition, and then bomb with precision. They said it couldn't be done. Combine offense with defense. But the Hornet did it, and did the Navy proud. The F-18 Hornet had shown its steam. Okay, cool. I like it. Little love letter to the Hornet. And again, it goes back to that mentality that I'll tell you about since you made it to the end of the video. What's going through the pilot's minds as they're transitioning from air to air to air to ground and then back again? Well, I'll tell you at first, it's tough. It's really hard because you're so focused in on the tactics of air to air, fighting your way in. You know, your mind is all about the air to air game plan is what it's called. And then after that, you got to change hats. And we would always say, all right, take off that hat, put on the air to ground hat, crush it. And you might leave a wingman up high to continue to protect you you know as you're executing air to ground but at the end of the day executing both while can be very challenging it's empowering man like it feels good knowing that you can defend yourself i mean could you imagine you're rolling in without any air-to-air -air weapons and now you've got to wait on someone to protect you like not a good way to go. So the fact that we have multi-role fighters the Hornet the F-15E the F-16 the F-35 in my opinion, I just think multi-role is the way to go, but if you have a different suggestion or a different thought, please let me know in the comments below. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed those F-18s taking on those MiG-21s. If you enjoyed this debrief, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for being here. Before you go, if you would, just dominate that like button for me, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, a multi-role aircraft comes off an assembly line. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. See you in the next video. Most of all, I hope you have a great day.